I mean, we don't really want you to go for a trip down memory lane mm -hmm. in all of this negativity, but was there a triggering comment sort of that broke the camel's back? You read that and you just thought, mm. this is toxic. I need to go. Yeah. When yeah. people make comments about my family and my situation there, yeah. that made me really insecure. So that was a big uh, triggering point for me that I had to remove myself from. Well, we spoke to Max Key just before, and he said a similar thing. Like, he's developed a thick skin now. So, you know, he reads these comments mm -hmm. and it just sort of just bounces off him. But it's the ones where it's, you know, you're, you know, your mum and your dad, your brothers and sisters and stuff. That's the stuff that really hits home. Like, even just thinking about, it, like, I don't have enough people on Instagram to follow me, but if somebody said something about my brother, like, why do you have to bring them into it? Yeah, so totally. I can understand totally. Mm. People are nasty. Now you're back on Instagram now. Mm -hmm. Um, so oh, you did a photo. You put a photo up of you dressing up as Adele, mm -hmm. and you said no Instagram caption can explain what I've been through. Now to a lot of people, they're supporting you, they're backing you, but to a lot of people. Have they taken it negatively because you've let yourself be vulnerable now so that they know that you've you've been through this hard time through what people have said on Instagram? So as bullies do, they like to knock people down at totally. their lowest point. So has this kept people being nasty? Uh, yeah, I definitely think there's a big group of people on Instagram who would love to see me fail and that are quite nasty towards me. But um, I'm trying to find a way to fight through that without getting personally attacked by it. Mm. Mm -hmm. And have you ever responded to the nasty comments? Uh, yeah, there's definitely times where I've kind of let them get the better of me and I've replied in a really angry way that just kind of, you know, makes up for what they're doing to me. But um, I've kind of learned to just ignore it as hard as it is. It's just good to block it out. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's completely human to respond. It's kind of like that fight or flight totally. kind of thing. Like, I could totally get that. Um, with depression, it's a very complex um, thing it's not like a common cold it's not like you you're diagnosed with it you have it you cure it it's gone like it's exactly. it's always there there's always going to be scars no matter how long it's been there or not whereabouts are you now in a mental position how are you at the moment well it's been crazy two weeks actually yeah, yeah. i don't know if i want to go into too much detail but mm -hmm. i've been in hospital recently just trying to take care of my mental health so it's been quite low and i'm just working through that at the moment because it's kind of another relapse stage i find that i get it kind of like during winter time yeah. Um, so yeah, just kind of taking every day as it comes. Yeah. And you say you've got these sort of like coping mechanisms and these methods and stuff, and you, you're writing a book as well, and you're saying you're yes. editing that helps as well. What are some sort of things that you do to combat these horrible mm. feelings? Well, it's quite hard. Like you kind of just got to find beauty in the little things. Like I was sitting at Point Shed Beach the other day, and I was just looking out to the sun, and I was like, that is so beautiful. Like just the nature. I was just sitting there for like half an hour staring at it, and cool. it's just kind of finding the little things. 